please allow me to introduce myself and, and us. So I'm Valentin Plugaru. I am the Chief Technology Officer of Lux Provide. We are indeed a, a new player in town. If I go to, to my next slide, you will actually see where we are and where the Melusina supercomputer is. Um, we are located in, in Bissen, a bit north of Luxembourg city, in the middle of the country um, of Luxembourg. We are um, providing now a new supercomputer center in, in Europe. Uh, we are um, uh, financed by, uh, by EuroHPC as a hosting entity for, uh, um, for uh, in, as part of the EuroHPC uh, petascale uh, systems in the Euro, uh, EuroHPC network. We're providing um, supercomputing solutions, both, let's say, in terms of, of infrastructure, but also in terms of, of knowledge and expertise. And our goal is to, to provide the democratization of HPC uh, to bring uh, new use cases on, on top of, uh, of supercomputing platforms. And this means engaging with a, a large variety of, of, uh, of partners, both from a public sector research academia, traditional users of, of HPC, but also to, to new uh, and interested uh, players, which are coming from industry or, or science, from different kinds of fields that have not yet tackled, uh, that have not yet been accelerated using uh, supercomputing facilities. Um, Meluxina, you, you have heard this name, uh, the name uh, this week, maybe if, if not before. Um, uh, Meluxina is uh, a supercomputer that is uh, been in the planning for, for a while now. Um, it will have a, 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 it's of tremendous importance for, for Luxembourg. It's of good, uh, uh, it's of a good scale to provide uh, support for both the research and industry uh, workloads. And it's coming at a time when Europe is, is doing a, a big push to have a new infrastructure, new centers, new systems coming up, um, a new, gen new generation of systems, some of them with different architectures to, to be able to, to provide a variety of, of solutions for, uh, for the applications and to see where we can build uh, uh, this digital decade on. Now, um, what we're doing is, is more than just infrastructure. So we are part of different uh, projects, so one of which is this initiative uh, called EuroCC, which is joining um, many countries, in uh, participating countries in, in Europe. Uh, this is about establishing uh, national competence centers, so for HPC, uh, high performance data analytics and AI, and in particular in Luxembourg, um, there is a consortium of three parties, which is uh, Lux Innovation, University of Luxembourg, and Lux Provide, um, where we are in in particular leading work for collaboration with industry and, and technology transfer. So, uh, if you will uh, want to to see what we do and the kind of uh, things that we have in mind, uh, please uh, see the uh, EuroCC Luxembourg. Uh, uh, um, website and, uh, and what we are doing in, in the EuroCC context. Um, we are here to, to show you a bit uh, Meluxina and how it has been designed and what we are looking to do with it. I, I have uh, to start to, with a bit of the vision for it. So the, from the beginning, it was not meant to be a system. It's in one sense, it's the first uh, national, um, uh, it's the first national supercomputer. So you have to be able to onboard a lot of, of use cases. Uh, those use cases uh, match uh, national priorities and also European priorities. Um, the idea is to be able to provide a comprehensive system that is flexible for a wide variety of, um, of workloads. Uh, workloads that are both uh, really computational, like traditional HPC modeling and simulation, but also really data-driven uh, simulation. And data-driven means, well, means uh, different things to, depending on your audience. Um, I will show you a bit uh, the kind of use cases that we have in mind, and then we can explore a bit what this actually means. So, um, you know, when people say, okay, we, we do simulations for space or we do analytics for space, what does this, uh, what kind of use cases do you actually have? So it can be things as varied as doing space weather forecasting. You want to send up a new satellite you need to look at what uh, what kind of debris is maybe on the orbit. That means that either you have uh, some tracking data for uh, for space debris, or you have uh, pictures um, from which you you can gather this knowledge. That that means uh, maybe analyzing uh, pictures or either kind of of data. Um, maybe you want to do uh, some design for for sensors with space applications or new materials that are that are going into the next generation satellites or space uh, um, space um, 
uh, well, everything from rockets to shuttles and so on. Um, or you want to, to analyze data coming from, from satellites. And we know that this data can be quite tremendous in size, especially if it's, if it's a satellite imagery. But space is one, one sector. Then if you go to, to financial sector and fintech, you're doing a wide variety of things. You can do um, a simulation of, of, of flows um, in, the, in the economy. You can look at the portfolios. You can uh, try to see um, uh, if there's fraud in transactions. That means graph analytics in the end. If you do manufacturing, engineering, doing uh, uh, new materials, uh, that can mean a simulation of, of everything from, from virtual factories, uh, doing digital twins of prototypes, virtual testing, uh, doing predictive maintenance where you're collecting data from a lot of sensors, having IoT, an IoT cloud doing uh, collecting some data and then well to get some, you need to get some insight out of the out of that data so you need to collect it and then be, be able to process it and of course some of those results you need in real time or pseudo real time to uh, to be able to take advantage of them um, uh, healthcare especially with uh, the covid pandemic uh, covid pandemic has really see, uh, has really shown that hpc has a has a huge impact uh, some simulations, uh, well, I, I believe the uh, CAC was doing some simulations for this very early on regarding uh, um, how in a shop uh, things uh, happen. If somebody is, is sneezing, uh, please feel free to correct me. <laughs> um, but uh, these kind of uh, simulations show really the, uh, the, the immediate, and pot in immediate impact of HPC and what you can do with it. Other things are, let's say, more tied to, to accelerating drug discovery or testing it. Um, checking how a human body will will uh, will uh, adapt to some medicine before you're actually doing this in, in clinical trials, and of course uh, climate and weather. I really have, don't have to reintroduce this. This has been a very typical use case for uh, for HPC for a long while. So we've designed Meluxina for for some time to be able to engage all of these kind of use cases. Um, we took this modular uh, supercomputing approach. Uh, essentially, Melusina is a cluster of, of clusters. It's a unified system with different modules for, for various needs. Um, of course, there's uh, for a wide variety of applications, uh, you need a traditional HPC uh, CPU-based system. That's our cluster module. Um, then there's an accelerator module, which has both uh, GPU or GPU AI accelerators and also some uh, FPGA uh, systems for reconfigurable computing and real-time decision-making. Uh, there is a large memory module for in-memory analytics. And of course, all of these things are tied in an infiniband interconnect for, um, for uh, lightning fast connectivity. But uh, underpinning all of it, of course, you, you can compute if you have some, some data on which to compute. So there is a storage module. Uh, which in our case it's uh, tiered storage, so there's maybe there's 20 petabytes or there's 25 petabytes uh, in various uh, tiers, uh, and I will really talk about that in more in, in a second. Uh, just to complete, the system has these computational blocks, a storage block, the fabric, and also a private cloud module. Uh, the, the cloud module is meant to sustain uh, well user portals, APIs, databases, things which are. Um, well, not computational in nature, but which uh, add value on top of that. You can orchestrate workloads on the rest of the modules, or you can have um, material properties, uh, databases inside. And of course, you wouldn't want to do that in a job context and start up and uh, shut down a, a database uh, with your jobs. So the cloud module is supposed to, to do all of that and provide also uh, different kind of portals for, for analytics and things that are, uh, well, remote, uh, data visualization, things that are really helping uh, people see data and manipulate data and interact with the, with the rest of the system. Uh, of course, uh, just having a, a nice supercomputer is, is still not enough. You need excellent uh, network connectivity. And in this case, we have uh, uh, excellent links uh, with well, public internet, also the Resena Giant network and with um, Lukix, which is an um, um, uh, internet exchange point in, in Luxembourg. Um, in terms of sizing, um, let's say the Melusina is a, is a petascale system, so there's uh, something like 90,000 uh, CPU cores, there's uh, 800 um, HPC AI accelerators, so GPUs, uh, in, 
NVIDIA Ampere uh, A100 GPUs. Uh, they themselves, uh, if you count all the CUDA cores and uh, AI cores, there's 5.5 million CUDA cores and uh, well, a quarter, uh, well, a third of a million uh, AI cores, uh, tensor cores. Uh, there's a half a petabyte of, uh, of RAM in the system and there's uh, 20 petabytes of, of, of storage plus a long-term uh, library archive. And again, all of these things are tied into an InfiniBand um, HDR fabric with a Dragonfly topology, which is quite, um, quite common for the modern uh, system uh, deployments. Um, then, of course, you have the compute, you have the storage, you have the network. Uh, we are providing or are, are going to, to pilot a lot of software stacks. Uh, we're using EasyBuild. And again, I will speak a bit more about this uh, later on. Um, in terms of how these things are, are sized, so in, in terms of performance, let's say that uh, Melusina well, has been uh, now ranked in, in uh, top 500 indeed, um, uh, as a above a 10 petaflop uh, supercomputer. That's on the um, accelerator module, the performance. Uh, there's maybe uh, 800 plus uh, compute nodes uh, between the different modules, a uh, cluster module with uh, close to 600 nodes, 200 for uh, CPU, GPU, hybrid nodes. 20 uh, FPGA nodes and 20 large memory nodes where the deliverables are regarding these uh, specialized workloads. So there's uh, 40 FPGAs, uh, Intel Stratix uh, 10 um, uh, with high bandwidth memory on top uh, for um, for the configurable computing. And the large memory nodes are very similar to the cluster nodes, uh, yet have uh, four terabyte of RAM to, to be able to sustain uh, uh, in-memory uh, data sets, uh, so especially workloads that cannot distribute things properly to take advantage of of a large system could potentially be accelerated there by bringing the data set into, into memory. Um, in terms of, of, of the data infrastructure, and I think this is uh, the most important uh, interesting for you, is of course the, the, the data part. So there, it's a tiered system. We have a tiered system for Melusina. Um, there's half a petabyte of all flash, uh, that's that's very fast. So this is meant for very intensive I/O. It's meant to have um, uh, different kind of uh, data repositories uh, that people are are using uh, uh, quite commonly. Uh, well, just to say, ImageNet, other things like that, that where you really need to uh, to do I/O a, a lot to be able to train the neural networks and so on. I uh, will also put application snapshots if you're starting to do a very long term. Um, execution where you, you need to, to be able to, to restart the job and uh, you, you cannot have a single running job for weeks and weeks. Uh, there is a main uh, data tier uh, for the, for all purpose, all, all kind of workloads, which were uh, seen as our project home and project uh, data tier. Also quite, quite fast, not as fast as the old flash, of course. And then there's two more tiers uh, for redundancy and long-term archiving. And the long-term archiving, we're seeing um, the original design has been to, to start with something like five petabytes building block, uh, but to be able to expand it to 100 petabytes. Uh, so here you, you can have a different kind of uh, storage for uh, things that are for reproducible signs. Maybe in, in five or 10 years, you need to come back and to still uh, uh, recompute or show that how some computing was done, and then you need the long-term archive. Uh, everything is tied into the InfiniBand interconnect, but I, I will not uh, spend more time on that. I will continue a bit uh, with more details on, on the data part. So in, in uh, the data is the data system is, is delivered with the DDN uh, infrastructure. So it's uh, well, it's Luster. There is different uh, Luster file systems. Uh, there's one Luster file system for the Scratch uh, tier. This is based on a full flash uh, platform. Uh, where each uh, building block, well, there's 12 building blocks uh, holding data and metadata. And then there's, um, uh, they have a very good uh, connectivity. Well, it's HDR 100 per, per building block. Uh, but uh, then uh, you have uh, for each building block, uh, four, four links into, into the fabric. And then on, on the project the data tier, there's, uh, it's a mixture of uh, hard disk and, um, and, the, and the flash for both uh, data and the metadata. And then uh, this is uh, more capacity uh, has much more capacity, of course, being based on on, uh, on hard drives. Uh, it's still a luster, but again, it's a separate file system. And then this it's the same kind of fabric connectivity in the back. In terms of I/O performance, uh, what we've seen in, in some initial testing, so we're still in in our acceptance uh, processes. Uh, but in terms of I/O performance, so pure throughput, uh, we're seeing. Uh, 
in the best uh, best result uh, so far has been on something like 256 uh, nodes on the scratch file system um, our uh, wish was to have at least uh, 400 gigabyte uh, per second and we are getting uh, a bit uh, better than that so for uh, write it's uh, above 450 and close to 600 for for uh, read um, that's uh, that's with one megabyte um, uh, block uh, if I if I remember correctly and then um, for the uh, Meluxina project uh, tier again this being a, a storage based on hard drives it's not that fast but it's uh, still uh, excellent compared to especially compared to the number of, of nodes we have so in particular other systems which have thousands and thousands of nodes will have better um, uh, total throughput, yet for us, given the, the computing environment, we have a really excellent uh, uh, throughput uh, for uh, on a per node uh, basis. And of course, not everything can sit uh, nicely on top of your fabric. So in front of those uh, things, um, so of course, the compute uh, login nodes and so on are tied into, into the scratch and project uh, tiers on, on InfiniBand fabric. But we also have a set of dedicated uh, services servers that can uh, that connect both to the fabric and with high connectivity to the Ethernet uh, uh, networks, and they can do uh, both NFS exports uh, or do if you want to keep um, native luster on doing it all over Ethernet, uh, then you have Lnet um, the Lnet option with. Um, uh, with Luster. So in particular, our cloud module will take advantage of, of these capabilities to provide data storage transfers uh, into the system from, from outside. So not um, uh, not only to, to have uh, this uh, uh, nice inter internal connectivity, but also to, to be able to provide it to external, uh, to external systems. Um, we in, in just to, to say a few words in terms of, of the computing environment, uh, for example, our uh, CPU nodes uh, will have uh, quite a good size of, of memory. There's around four gigabytes of, of, of RAM per core, uh, yet they don't have any local storage. However, on the GPU nodes, uh, we've put uh, local storage uh, to provide an extra um, uh, caching space. So if you want to be able to do some uh, some work locally and not, uh, um, not to hit the file system, of course, this requires uh, application support or your workflow needs to take uh, uh, advantage of this, um, yet there is also the possibility of, of storing things locally, so immediately close to the to the computing part. And we are thinking that in, in the future it could be possible to add, uh, so not only our, uh, let's say our, um, uh, in addition to the parallel file system uh, luster, to also have um, uh, a BGFS uh, on demand uh, on inside the inside the job allocation. Uh, to to take advantage of, of the local storage yet all the local storage uh, aggregated together in a single in a single job and this is also the case for the large memory nodes uh, the large memory nodes being as i said very similar to uh, to the cpu nodes except for the memory uh, local memory that is there uh, fpga nodes are, are are also very very similar yet they have uh, two stratix 10 mx uh, cards uh, 16 gigabyte of uh, high bandwidth memory on top, and we hope to see quite uh, some interesting use cases out of this, um, especially for, like I said a bit before, uh, real-time decision-making um, workloads. So in, in terms of, of software stack, um, to take advantage of this, um, we have a, 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 the goal has been, of course, to be able to take advantage of the different kind of uh, modules that are in, in, in the same system. Uh, of course, this brings, uh, there are still compute nodes with um, well, AMD CPUs, so Ampere, uh, Zen2, there's GPUs of the Ampere generation, there are FPGAs with Stratix. So this is also presenting us a challenge. Uh, we are handling this by uh, doing a deployment with EasyBuild, although we're also keeping, um, uh, doing a, a parallel installation with, with SPAC and uh, trying to see how uh, how users that want to use pack integrate with uh, this um, with this uh, um, with our other uh, tool chains uh, and software stacks um, i don't know if you know the ec project uh, yet this is providing an interesting way to to provide the software to the users where you're not uh, having your software stack on top of your file system but you're using https or http web services essentially to to provide them uh, the, the software tools and the advantage of that is that you are able maybe to use it from a personal workstation, the same kind of tool stack as you are using on um, on the HPC platform.
Uh, in terms of user software environment, uh, well, I will not uh, spend it too, too much time. It's uh, it's going to be a complete uh, one like you have on uh, many other uh, systems. Uh, maybe um, one thing that will be interesting for us is that we, we really have a, a really wide variety of, of uh, applications. So we will see how the users are trying to use them and which data tier is better suited for their kind of uh, work knowing that some applications behave very differently also depending on input and also they have different stages where it's maybe good to to put uh, to place data on one tier or the other so again uh, tiering is uh, is a long discussed uh, problem that i think it's not really uh, not really solved um uh, of course, uh, software stacks uh, are good when you deploy them, but people want to bring their own. And in our case, we're bringing also um, uh, tooling uh, with a container for containers. So singularity is one thing that we'll, uh, we're doing from day one. Uh, yet we're also trying the NVIDIA and root uh, system to, to see how this uh, works. Um, and one uh, nice uh, challenge if you are using a container is to be able to integrate well with the software which is on top of your platform, in, including uh, the drivers to bring out the, optional, uh, the optimal uh, performance of, of the system. So in terms of InfiniBand, GPU, and so on. So um, uh, these kind of, of things are, 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 are nice to, to do for users because they are able to, to say, okay, uh, I, I don't uh, care about your software stack. I just bring my own, but then uh, still there may be some integration that is, uh, that is needed. Um, uh, we, we've already said it uh, a few minutes ago, so we uh, we have been nicely ranked in in the top 500 also in the green 500 in the graph 500 and today we also have a nice result in in the io 500 um, i think we're number 48 with the meluxina uh, scratch here maybe we can still improve on that number by the way um yet yes meluxina is, is has been meant to to to, to be ranked uh, against the the nicest supercomputers in the world and to, to handle its own, and I think we, we have uh, succeeded to do that. Um, no, no presentation of, of such a system is, is complete without showing at least some pictures. Um, and maybe if you have not seen uh, um, a board with uh, Ampere GPUs uh, open, uh, it's the one on the bottom in the center that you're able to, to see. Um, you know, these GPUs have ultra high bandwidth, uh, ultra high uh, connectivity in, in this case. So the Medusina GPU nodes are uh, are dual rail connected to, to the fabric. So there's two times uh, 200 gigabit per second. Uh, and we have a quite a nice, um, uh, quite a nice um, uh, B-section bandwidth on, on Meluxina uh, to actually be able to, to have good connectivity between all parts of the system. So this includes uh, with, with the storage, which you see actually on in the picture on the uh, top uh, on the top right. That's essentially the, the DDN storage uh, systems together with the export uh, and uh, um, monitoring and analytics uh, service, uh, services services that are. That are um, that are there on top of the file system. Um, what is next uh, for us uh, is uh, well opening up uh, Medusina for users and having uh, excellent science uh, being done uh, on it and amazing innovation with the industry that uh, will uh, will be able to take advantage hopefully of all of those well the different storage tiers of the different computing uh, um, platforms and also of these of the software stacks that are that are on top. So uh, I would like to thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, I, I rushed a bit, uh, and I'm uh, hopefully keeping us uh, closer to the original envisioned uh, timescale. I would very much enjoy if you have uh, some questions. And uh, if not, uh, please always uh, get in touch, and we will be very happy to talk to you. Thanks, Valentin. Thanks a lot for this presentation. So actually, we have many questions for you. Um, oh, that's good. <laughs> So there is one question from, from Glenn Lockwood uh, about the archive. Are you using a hard drive? And what is the software that you are using for, for the archive? Uh, the archive is an IBM, uh, is an IBM uh, tape archive. Uh, and the, it's, it's a tape. It's a tape. It's a tape archive. It's a tape archive, and it's uh, there's a data flow uh, software stack from Atempo and DDN, uh, as a DBN partner that are, um, that are providing it. Okay, excellent. Thanks. So now there is a second question from uh, Adrian from EPCC. So how do you use the GPU node local storage? Uh, do you manually move data around or um, 
do you TD up after jobs? Uh, so, uh, well, that's a good question. So the idea is, of course, uh, one thing I didn't mention is that we're doing full node uh, scheduling um, on all the compute nodes. This is done both for performance and security reasons. Uh, the idea is to, uh, of course, uh, before any any job starts and after every job ends, is to clean up uh, uh, potentially leftover files, and this is happening. Uh, so, if user brings in data uh, as part of his workflow, or, or if there's some local uh, cache that he's uh, using, upon the job uh, completion, the uh, the local storage will be cleaned up. So that's uh, that's the concept. As I said, uh, we're doing now um, version 1.0 of Meluxina. I would be very, very uh, happy uh, uh, to see a Meluxina 1.1 at the end of the year, having uh, multiple uh, use cases uh, that, uh, that uh, lead us to provide different things uh, that we have not maybe thought of before. As I said, um, uh, BGFS on demand uh, could be an option or other things that are helping with the staging uh, could definitely be integrated. We will be user user requ request uh, driven, so that's uh, what I will say. So I'm still going to to try to squeeze two additional questions in the few minutes that we have uh, ahead of us. So one question from Bruno Silva from AWS: How mm -hmm. will you monitor which applications the user are launching? Um, well, this is a very tricky uh, question. So, in, in, in particular, um, because we are meant to, to provide the services for industry, uh, we may not uh, do this uh, in, in some cases, at least, uh, because that's uh, spying on users. Uh, and in particular, for some security uh, contexts, uh, I mean, proprietary context, if somebody is using a, a nice uh, application with some parameters, uh, they would not want this information to be. Uh, to be collected. Uh, yet, uh, remember, we are using uh, LMOD and our software stack uh, um, uh, will be on top of that. So if uh, people are using our software stack, it's possible to hook uh, with LMOD to see what modules people are using, uh, such that you, you know, for example, when you want to decommission a, 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 to a software stack to announce, okay, there are still some people using a two-year-old stack. Please really don't do that anymore. And then uh, this is uh, what we will uh, do in the cases where this is uh, possible. So I have a last question on afterward. It will be the lunch break. Uh, it's a question from uh, Vasilios Bausis from ECMWF. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you provide some information about your cloud model technology and sizing? OpenStack. It's OpenStack in, 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 in uh, well, IBM uh, OpenStack or Red Hat OpenStack. Um, so Red Hat OpenStack, uh, and then there is, uh, it's a tiny cloud, huh? it's uh, 20 compute nodes, uh, well, 20 compute nodes plus uh, management uh, of it. Uh, each of them is uh, similar in sizing to the, um, to our, our regular compute nodes, meaning that there's uh, two HPC CPUs inside, uh, 128 cores, uh, half a terabyte of, of RAM on each. And actually there is a local, there is a storage that is a Ceph storage, uh, just for the VM uh, images uh, that is uh, closely coupled to, to this uh, platform. So it's meant uh, as an initial starting block. So we may extend in the need if we see that we need to couple a lot of applications very closely to the computing or, or in the storage environment. We, it's one of the modules where we would see the most potential for expansion in the future. Okay, so thanks thanks a lot, uh, Valentin. You answered to, to many questions. You gave us a, a very... Uh, Nice presentation of Meluxina. Thank you very so, much.